As I stressed before, mastering lead nurture is critical. This is where the money is made. To show you just how important this is, I've baked up a hypothetical situation for two imaginary businesses, business one and business two. In this example, we are going to assume that this imaginary business gets 100 leads just to keep the math simple. And I'm going to take you through two different scenarios. Everything in each scenario is exactly the same with the exception of the lead nurture. All right, so in scenario one, business one had a 50% book rate and a 50% show rate. Business two, however, does an awesome job with lead nurture and they have a 75% book rate and a 75% show rate. Everything else is exactly the same. So with business number one, they have 100 leads. 50% of the 50 that booked actually show up for their appointment. So that's 25 people. 75% of those people buy our introductory package. So that's 18 people. And let's say that the front end package costs about $300. So that's going to be a total of $5,400 in front end revenue. But we also know that there's back end revenue to consider as well, meaning revenue generated after retaining these new clients. So let's say that of the 18 people that did the introductory program, 40% of those stay and they each pay for an additional $1,200 worth of services over the lifetime that they are there. 40% of 18 is seven people. And again, they each pay $1,200. So that's gonna give us a grand total of $8,400 in back end revenue. When you combine that with the front end revenue, that's gonna be $13,800 for this campaign. Not too shabby, but we can do better. Let's go over to the other business, business number two. Now these are people who really picked up the phone, called people, they followed up, and they got their prospects to show up for their appointments. So they had 100 leads, same as the other business, but this time 75% of those leads actually booked an appointment. So it's gonna be 75 appointments booked. And let's say with this business, they had an amazing follow-up sequence. They had automated emails that got sent out, text messages, and they even called these prospects to confirm the appointments prior to when they were supposed to show up. So in this case, 75% of those 75 people actually show up for their appointments. So that's gonna be 56 people coming into the business. Let's say the sales rate, the closing percentage is gonna be identical to business one and that was 75%. So this business had 42 people sign up instead of just 18. Same price with the front end offer, that's $300. So that means there's $12,600 in front end revenue. But remember of these 42 people, 40% of them are gonna end up staying for the long haul. So 40% of 42 is gonna be 17. Multiply that by $1,200 for the lifetime value and you get $20,400 in backend revenue. So for this campaign with business two, they're generating $33,000 in total revenue. And again, the only difference between these two businesses is that business two did a really good job of lead nurture, whereas business one did not. And that made $19,200 worth of difference in just one campaign, all things being equal. So almost every internet guru out there mentions lead nurture in some capacity. A lot of the time I hear this concept come up when people are trying to promote some kind of automated email service like MailChimp, or when I see promotions for texting automations like for Scipio. And there are some other niche solutions as well. I do believe that having an automated long-term lead nurture plan is really important for new client growth. I think you should spend time and resources working on your email newsletters and your automated messaging sequences for your prospects. However, I would argue that those things are secondary and that your primary focus for nurturing your leads should be this. You need to pick up the phone and you need to use it. Getting your new leads on the phone is still gonna be the most effective way to increase your ROI on your paid advertising campaigns. And when it comes to calling your leads, there are two key components that you need to master. The first one is speed. You need to be fast. Speed to response is everything. A couple years ago, the Harvard Business Review did a study and measured the lead response time of 2,241 US companies. And they found that over 74% of companies take more than five minutes to respond to a new lead. And they also found that 64% of companies take more than one hour to respond to a new lead. That means that the overwhelming majority of businesses take well over an hour to respond to their new leads. And this is a big deal and can have a huge effect on the revenue of your business. And here's why. In a separate study, BYU professor Dr. James Olroyd studied over 100,000 call attempts for a group of companies. And he found that businesses are 21 times more likely to qualify a lead when a contact attempt occurred within the first five minutes of a new lead inquiry, compared to 30 minutes after a lead comes in. Let's put that into perspective. If my business is really good with lead nurture and my staff responds to leads within five minutes of when they come in, and let's say your business, you're just okay, and you wait until 30 minutes after, you'll need to spend 21 marketing dollars for every $1 that I spend. So a business with bad marketing but good lead nurture 
is still far superior to a business with the world's best marketing but bad lead nurture. The lead nurture and what goes on after a lead comes in matters so much more than the ads. But there was more that came out of that study. If you compare the lead response time of one hour versus two hours, the businesses were seven times more likely to qualify a lead. And if you compare a lead response time of one hour versus 24 hours, the businesses were 60 times more likely to qualify a lead. So all this means that the best predictor of a closed transaction is your speed to response. Because 35 to 50% of the sales goes to the vendor that responds first. So the reality is, if someone is looking for a service to solve whatever particular problem that they have, your business is not going to be the only one that they look up. If they scroll by your ad, chances are they're going to scroll by another ad that's going to look very similar from your competitors pretty soon. So to be great with lead nurture, speed is really important. But that's not all. The second thing you need to master if you want to be the best when it comes to lead nurture is persistence. You can't give up too soon. If we take a look at one more study, this time from a group called Inside Sales, they found that 30% of leads are never contacted. That's 30% of every advertising dollar just going down the drain. Furthermore, they found that most sales reps only call a lead once. And here's the worst part about operating with a one call system. Less than 40% of leads pick up on the first phone call or outreach attempt. But your chances of connecting with a lead, they jump to 90% on your sixth phone call attempt. So if you only make one call attempt, you can instantly double your chances of making contact by calling three more times. But the sweet spot is six to nine call attempts. So those are the two key principles for awesome lead nurture. You need to respond to your leads quickly and you need to continue to follow up with them day after day. 